For the following exercise, determine whether the relation represents y as a function of x. All right, so in order to determine that, the first thing is to solve this thing for y. All right, that is our first step down here on the bottom left. We'll solve the equation for y, then we're going to graph what it looks like, and then we're going to conduct the vertical line test. Okay, three steps. And you can follow these three steps in uh, probably almost all questions involving this type of is y a function of x. So let's just rewrite it so it's going to be x is equal to square root of 1 minus y squared. All right, so the whole goal is to solve for this y. Now, first thing is I got to get rid of the square root, okay? So what we do to both sides is we are going to square them, okay? Now, what happens is when we square x, it just becomes x squared, right? And when we square the radical, we just cancels, right? So it's just going to be 1 minus y squared. Okay, so now solving this thing for y, I'm going to look to bring the y squared on over to the uh, left-hand side, so I have to add it across both. And I'm also then going to subtract the x squared from the uh, left-hand side. And I'm going to bring that on over to the right-hand side. All right, so when we do that now, uh, we're going to get this result. y squared is equal to, and uh, we can write negative x squared plus 1. Okay. Now we're almost there, right? I need to solve this thing for y. So what I need to do is get rid of the square. In order to do that, I have to take the square root of it. And if I take the square root of the left, I also have to take the square root of the right. Now remember this. Anytime you take the square root, okay, you will always get a positive and negative answer. So whenever you take the square root of a square, okay, you're always going to get the positive and negative value of whatever is inside. Um, you can simply understand this by saying or thinking, what's the if I were to take positive 2 and square it, the value of that is 4, right? And if I were to take negative 2 and square that, the result is also 4. So the value here could be either plus or minus 2, and we would still get the same value of 4, okay? So that's why you have to always incorporate that. Please don't forget that. This will help you out in determining how to input the graph into your calculator. All right. So now what this will be, and let me just move this up slightly. So now what we have is we have this being equal to, we can't really take the square root of that, right? So I'm just going to leave it alone. It's just going to be square root of negative x squared plus 1. All right. Now what we can do is we can move these signs on over to the right-hand side. Okay. This is basically saying like there's a coefficient of positive 1 and negative 1, right? And we can divide it on out. We don't have to get too much in detail here, but just, just bring those signs on over to the right-hand side. So now this is going to be x, oops, don't forget the negative, negative x squared plus 1. Okay. Now at this stage, what we are able to do, let me just move this on up a little bit. Okay. Now at this stage, what we are able to do is now since we have y equaling a positive and negative version of this thing, I can break this on up into two separate equations so we can graph it in our calculator. So if we now break this up into the positive answer, so it's going to be negative x squared plus 1, and we break it up into the negative answer, meaning y is equal to negative negative x squared radical of negative x squared plus 1. Now what we do is we graph these two things in the calculator. We plug them in as basically two separate functions, okay? So when we do that now, that's step two. We're going to graph it, okay? So step two now is to graph. So when we throw this thing on into the calculator, I gather it's going to look something like this. It looks something like a circle when you graph both of them, okay? So the circle will basically have the limits of one negative 1, 1, and 1, right? So this, it goes up to 1, it goes over to the right to a value of 1, it goes down to negative 1, etc. Okay, so that's, the, that's what the function looks like in totality. Now what we are able to do since we have the graph, and I shouldn't really call it a function, I think I might have. I shouldn't really call this a function, let's just call it a graph, because I don't know if it is a function or not. All right, this is just a graph of this equation. Whether it is a function or not is what I'm going to test now. So how we do that is we simply perform this thing called the vertical line test. All right. And the vertical line test says that if a vertical line does not intersect the graph more than once, meaning it intersects it only once or no times, 
then the graph is a function, all right? So if I were to draw a vertical line here, what happens? Well, I intersect the graph in two locations, right? I intersect it here and here. Once it intersects the graph two or more times, it fails the vertical line test. I don't even have to test any other spots. So therefore, since it failed the vertical line test, we can call this not a function. So the original equation that we were given is the equation of a circle, and this is not a function. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, hit the like button. We'll see you next time. Take care.